Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome. Uh, thank you for that lovely introduction. It's much appreciated. So we're all here. Just um, grab a seat down the front. That's fine. I'll just wait for these few people to come in and then, then we'll get started. <laughs> so welcome everyone. Thanks for coming along to my talk on navigating the ASF incubating process. Uh, has that worked? No. <laughs> ah, good. <laughs> so as you may know, I am Justin McLean. Uh, I've been involved with the ASF for about 10 years, a little longer than that, in fact. And um, I actually came to the ASF by accident. A company had a project and they decided to donate it to the ASF. I used that project a lot uh, and I got involved in the incubator. Once that project had graduated, I thought, I really like doing this. I'm going to try and help some other projects also incubate. Uh, and so that's what I've done. So eventually I became the VP of the Apache Incubator. I've done that for about five years. Um, and this is my third term on the board uh, as a ASF director. So um, in my day job, uh, I currently got a new job about two months ago. Uh, and it's actually a small startup based in Shanghai. And I am their community manager. So um, it's open source has got me to work. What I'm doing, I'm now being paid for it. So that's great. <laughs> Is that? Ah, good. Sorry, the slides are behind me and I, I can't see them. So. Um, so, you know, what is the Apache Incubator? So the incubator is the main path of entry uh, to the ASF. It's not the only way that a project can come to the ASF. So a project can come to the ASF straight as a top level project. Um, it can also be spring out of another project as a sub-project. And there's also another experiment called Petri, uh, which is another way of, of getting into th the ASF. But the main path is the ASF incubator. Uh, and what you m there's a process for this, and I'm going to go through the process. But what you might not know is that in a lot of cases, there's discussion about whether or not a project is a good fit when it joins the incubator. And that discussion may not happen in public always. Uh, sometimes it does, but not, not always. And so a lot of projects, once they get into the, uh, once you see them being discussed on the list, at that point, they're, they're probably going to become an incubating project. So uh, the other thing is that part of the incubation process uh, you are assigned some mentors and these mentors are experienced ASF people and they will help guide your project and help you learn the Apache way and that's what I'm going to explain in a, a little bit. And as well as the mentors there's the incubator project management committee as a whole. Come on in. There's two seats down the front. All right. Well, there. <laughs> That's fine. We've still got some people coming in, so I'll just pause for a second. So we're talking about the Apache Incubator and, and you know, what the, the, the first parts of it are. And as I was saying, the, there's discussions about the Incubator, of whether or not a project is a good fit or not. We assign you mentors and then the Incubator PMC uh, will oversee voting on releases, general progress of the project, and then finally graduation. Yeah, good. Okay. So all of this is based around the Apache way. And depending on who you ask, you're going to get slightly different answers to this. But there's some core parts of the Apache way that projects need to value and they need to, to work out a way of working within this framework. And the first one is charity. The ASF is a charity for the public good. We give software away for free. That is a really strange thing to do. We don't ask for any money. <laughs> you know, we do have sponsors who you know, give us some money so we can keep servers running and then we can host things and you know, all, the, all the rest like that. But we don't actually uh, do this. Now this means that when 
you're representing, when you're working on an ASF project, you're representing yourself, not your company. And that sometimes can be a hard thing to do. Um, it also means that companies don't have a say in the direction of a project. They can, they can have input into that, but it's the community as a whole who describes what direction the project goes in. Um, but that being said, we do use the Apache license, and that is a pragmatic and business-friendly license. Uh, and it means that corporations and, and companies can do just about whatever they want with it. So uh, it's, you know, it's, it, it's sort of the best of both worlds. We're also very big on community. So these, these projects will build a community around them and this community will make decisions via consensus. And, and what that means is the community as a whole decides what is best for the project and what is the best way forward. That may not be, that doesn't mean that everyone has to agree on that. It just means that it's the best way forward. And quite often this means that things get done in small reversible steps. So if something doesn't work, you can get rid of it, take a step back, try something else and see if that works. It also means that because people are uh, representing themselves and because this is a community-based development, it means that you get a, a larger diversity of committers than you would possibly in a single country, uh, company. Uh, and, and, th and that's a good thing. That reduces risk and it also means makes innovation easier. It means if a company decides to change direction and not be involved in this project anymore, um, the project can still continue. The other thing we recognise is this concept of merit and the way that I like to describe it is uh, the more you do, the more responsibility you're given. So you're not rewarded for your hard work, you get more hard work. <laughs> so, uh, but that's a good thing. It, it, it means that the people who are willing to do the work end up doing the work and the people who put up their hands and say they'll do the work and then don't do the work, nothing happens. So that's good. And the last important thing is that everything is open and transparent. So uh, it means that anyone can come along after the project has started. And this is the important thing because not everyone's going to be around from day one of your project. So they can come after the project has started, they can look at the mailing lists and you, the documentation that you have and they can see what's happened in the project and they can see what decisions were made and they can see why those decisions were made. If they have questions about the project, they can probably find those answers written down somewhere uh, because they, those questions may have been asked before. Uh, and, and so this all you know, helps build the, the community. So once you become an intub incubating project, you know, what's, what happens? What is the aim of this? And the aim is basically adopting the Apache way. And that is to embrace collaboration. I worked together towards a common goal. And yeah. Oh, it's not? Oh, okay. Oh, sorry about that. Oh. I've got my notes mixed up. That's okay. Let me talk about this then. <laughs> So, I should introduce the Apache Incubator first, <laughs> before talking about what, what you get into it. Um, no, I have discussed that. Ah, yes, yes, thank you. So, the buttons are the wrong way round on the remote. It's confusing. <laughs> so, the aims of the um, incubating process. Thank you for pointing that out. Much appreciated. <laughs> So you want to adapt the, the Apache way, work in a collaborative manner together, and also make decisions via consensus. As I said, that just means that it's the best way forward for the project. It's not the best way forward for an individual, and it's not the best way forward for a corporation. So again, they may have input into this, but it's as the be what's best for the community as a whole. Um, the other thing you need to do when you're going through this process is to grow your community. You want to add 
new committers and you want to add new PMC members. Um, and you want to try and add uh, uh, committers that come from different backgrounds and have different skills and complement the community rather than just, you know, have everyone from the same company work, working on this code. And this, you know, helps sustain the project over the time. And it's actually one of the things that we look at when a project graduates. Uh, we want to see that there is a diverse set of committers there. Um, licensing and branding. We, you need to understand how the ASF treats licenses and how it treats the Apache brand and you need to work along with that. You also need to make releases. I mean, this is the whole point of being a, an ASF project. We make software for the public good. If you're not making releases, then you're not making software. <laughs> so that's one thing that you need to do. And finally, you want to graduate as a top level project. Uh, and generally that takes about one or two years. Uh, some projects have done it in a shorter amount of time. Uh, some have taken longer and some never actually graduate. <laughs> the most, most, most common, most, most projects do graduate. So, uh, so you know, you, you and, and, and the most common reason that a project doesn't graduate is that it fails to build a community around it. And there may be many reasons for that. It may be that, you know, some better technology has come along and all their users have decided to use that rather than this project. It may be that they just never got the traction to attract people in the first place. So a, a lot of things can happen there. So let's see if I hit the right button this time. No? Ah. So we're going to talk about the steps in creating an incubating project. And the first step is filling out a proposal. And we ha actually have a template that you can go through. And the template's pretty easy to fill out. It just asks a, a whole lot of questions about your community. You know, uh, where are all your committers from? Where is the code base is? And, and things along those. Why do you want to become an Apache project? Uh, you know, it's sort of pretty important. Um, and there are examples that you can also follow and, and copy from. Uh, don't copy and paste the entire thing. You know, you need some input of your own. Um, and then there is a discussion on the incubator mailing list. And in that discussion, we will work out whether or not the project is a good fit. But as I said before, these sort of discussions generally happen a little earlier than that. In fact, I've already spoken to four separate projects at this conference who want to possibly join the incubator. Uh, and I, I hope to see them <laughs> there. Uh, um, so then there's a discussion, and after the discussion, if no major issues are found, there's a vote, and the project gets accepted as an incubating project. So then it enters the incubator. Yeah, good. And the first, there's, there's a bootstrap stage where a whole lot of little things happen. So this is things like transferring your existing code into the ASF. Uh, and this, this, these days, that's usually through GitHub repository and all your history is kept, uh, all your issues are kept, so you don't lose any of that information. Uh, it just moves to a new place and in fact even the, the old repo will redirect to the new one. So people who, who don't know that you're becoming an Apache project will just be moved to the right location. So there's, there's no real concerns there. Um, it's also about setting up mailing lists and your website. Uh, and other infrastructure, like you might have some uh, build infrastructure that you need, for example. So, so the, the, the mentors and or the champion of the project will help you with, with these tasks, and you'll probably also need a little bit of help from uh, Infra as well. That's the, the Apache infrastructure team. Um, and as part of this process is in your in, in initial document, you would have listed who are the members of the Podling, uh, incubating project is called the Podling, the PPMC. That's the Podling Project Management Committee. Who are those? A and they will be set up as, uh, as well. So once you've sort of bootstrapped and started getting on your way, the main process is um, learning about the Apache way and how to apply it to your project. Um, and 
you know, there's, there's several things that fall out of those values that I had up on my screen before. And the first thing is it's all about community. It is, uh, as we say, at this conference is all, it's called Community Over Code. <laughs> so we're all in the right spot, obviously. <coughs> So we want, you want to encourage community collaboration. You want to make sure that people are working well together. Uh, you want to make sure that people are acting in the project's best interests as individuals, not who they work for. And again, this can be hard. It can also, depending on the community that comes along with the project, they may not be used to developing things in this style. So it takes time to learn how to do that. It, it's not that, you know, a project will not be doing things in the right way, we understand that it takes time to do this. And this is part of the reason why we have an incubating process. So people can learn how to do the, the right things on their own with some help. Um, you also need to work in a transparent manner. So everything needs to be in the open. That's on, you know, on the website or on a wiki or on the mailing list. Um, you also need to acknowledge people who come along and help you out. And generally that is by giving them committer status. Uh, and again, when you graduate, the incubator, PMC, will look at how many committers you've had it, added, how many PMC members you've added. And if you've got other people who have contributed a lot to your project, but for some reason they're, they're not a committer. Um, we also take vendor neutrality very, very, very importantly. So you, you need to, I've mentioned this several times now, it, it, again, people are individuals at a project, they're not who they work for. Um, and e even when that has happened, sometimes corporate influence can, can still creep in, uh, and, and that is something that we, we, we look for uh, throughout the project, your mentors will help you with that, and also when it becomes to gradu or gradu graduation. Uh, and we also want to make sure that you have a diverse set of committers along the way as well. As I was saying before, we, we expect people to work for different companies, we expect people to come from different backgrounds, we expect people to have different skill sets. We also expect that you reward contributions that are just not, not only code. You want people who can help grow your community. You want people who can help with your website. You want people who can write documentation. You want people who can write tests. All those sort of things are, are, are going to help you a lot. So the other thing you're going to learn as you go through graduation is about licensing and intellectual property. Um, this can be complex. Uh, don't worry, we have documentation and people who know this stuff very well who can help. So, um, and this happens at a lot of points throughout your graduation process. Uh, it would start off with the initial software grant to, your, uh, to the ASF. So this is the company has donated the code to Apache. Uh, and it also happens when you get new committers, or even the initial committers as well because all of them have to sign uh, what's called an ICLA, an Indi Individual Contributor License Agreement. And that means that you have permission to donate code to this project. You know, we don't ask, um, uh, you should double check with who you work for that that's okay, but we don't ask that you've done that, we just assume that you have. It's also um, about uh, the ASF brand and respecting the AS ASF brand so to make sure that you, you, you use your project's name properly and third parties also use the, that name uh, properly. And, and finally, it's also with releases. So with every single release, you, we're going to look at what third party bits of software are in there and how they are licensed and whether that license is compatible with the Apache license or not. For some projects, this is very simple. Uh, for some projects, this is very complex. So it, it really is going to depend on the, the type of project that you are. As well as that, as well as you're going through this process, you also need to build a community around you. Um, and this is often the hardest thing to do. You know, uh, I think 
it, we were in a, one of the keynote talks earlier said, uh, software is easy, people are hard. <laughs> so, and that's, that's very, very true. It is very hard to build a, a bigger community. Sometimes having good software is enough, so that, that will attract people, but generally you've got to do a lot more work than that. You've got to write blog posts, you've got to attend conferences, you have to engage with people and get them interested in what you're doing. Uh, and yeah, and that takes effort and time. Um, you also want to have a welcoming environment for all your contributors. The best way you can make someone into a contributor um, is this, they're a user and they come along with a question and you help them out. If you help someone out, they're more likely to come back and you can help them again. Eventually, after you've helped them enough, they might be able to help you and they might become a contributor to the project. And if they contribute enough to the project, then they will become a user. And they might, I'm uh, sorry, not a user. If they contribute enough, they will become a committer. <laughs> so, uh, and, and so on. So it, it's, uh, oops. So, and w another way to help attract people to your project is, is with documentation and clear communication. If you've got good documentation of your code, if you've got examples of how to set your software up, if your software is easy to build, that's all going to help attract people. I, I, the worst thing I've, I always, you know, I've downloaded a bit of open source software, try to get it to build, can't get it to build, I give up on it, and I never go back and look at it again. <laughs> right. So you want to make sure that, that, that that's easy. Um, you also want clear and open uh, communication. Uh, and you need to remember that not everyone is in the same time zone as you. Not everyone works full time for a company. There may be people who are hobbyists or work in their part time. Uh, there may be people who, who are working full time, but this is only part of their job. It's, it's not, not, not their whole job. Uh, so sometimes you need to slow the communication down a bit. And you know, this means that conversations may take place over days rather than a single day. And that's okay, that's, that's totally fine. By doing that, you include so much more people, many more people in your project than you could possibly do. Um, again, this takes time to learn and can be difficult if you're, if you're not used to it. So, um, you also want to you know, appreciate people who do come and contribute. You know, uh, celebrate their small wins, congratulate them, uh, award them with committer status, um, help when, when you do so, help onboard them so you know, they're not lost and don't know what to do. This may be the first time that they're a committer on a project. Uh, so by helping with all of that, hopefully you can build a community over time. Uh, oh yeah, okay. So that t title up the top there, which is cut off, uh, is about making releases. So as I was saying before, one of the biggest things that you have to do uh, at as an ASF project is actually create releases. And we have a strict release process and it is there for a reason. The process is there to provide legal protection for the PMC that makes the release and also legal protection for the ASF. So if you don't do things in this way, uh, then maybe bad things can happen. <laughs> you know, it may not, but it, it may not. So the release process uh, is actually done by a manual vote. So you'll, you'll create some software, you'll pull it, put it together, you'll make a release, and you'll vote on it. And the project, man uh, the P PPMC, that's the project's project management committee, will need to vote it, and it needs three plus one votes and more plus ones than minus ones. And then the incubator also votes on it, and the same thing happens there. Um, and when you're looking, voting on a release, um, you need to look at the several things there. It's, is the release signed? Does it have a license and notice file? Are there any binary files inside the release? Does the, uh, is all the software in there compatible with the Apache license? So it's all those sort of things. So there's a whole lot of more things than just, does it compile and do the test pass, <laughs> right? So there's these things on top of them. Um, do all the files have source headers uh, and the correct ones? So that's a, a, you know, another common mistake that some so gets there. So eventually after 
you've managed to do all of this, you know, you've entered the incubator, you've learnt the Apache way, you've uh, made releases, you've added committers and PMC members to your project, um, hopefully you get to graduate as a top-level project. And what will happen there is that the incubator PMC will look at your project and evaluate it to see whether it, it should be a top-level project or not. And the project doesn't have to be perfect. We have a, a checklist, um, and as long as you're working towards all of those things, that's okay if you, if you don't meet them all. You know, we don't want to have you stuck in the incubator forever. You know, that's, that's not good for you, it's not good for us. <laughs> so it's a uh, thing. So what we do, what we look at when you're graduating is the first thing is that can you actually do this by yourself? Can you self-govern? Um, and that's, oh, sorry, I'm on the wrong page. There we go. <laughs> so, so can you self-govern? Um, if you can look after yourself, then you don't need the incubator's help anymore. That's what it comes down to. Um, also, are you not controlled by a single entity? So does a single individual or a single company have the majority of the power uh, in your project? If it does, then that's a bad sign and, and you're not likely to, gra to graduate. Um, have you understand the release process? Do your releases comply with ASF policy and the licensing that's in there? Uh, uh, we would have found this out by now. <laughs> so, uh, hands up here who has who has been through the incubator, just out of interest. Do we have one, two, couple? Have I voted minus one on one of your releases? Yes. <laughs> so that's that's good to hear. So, um, as well as understanding the um, ASF release policy, uh, you also need to understand the other ASF policies, and that includes branding. And branding can, can sometimes be one of the harder ones, because a, a, a project will often leave it to the last minute. They, they, they will think, oh, that's not important, we'll put it off until later. And then sometimes they find some serious issues. And there's been a few projects in recent time where that has happened. So we try to encourage projects to look at their branding um, and trademarks a, a lot earlier than, 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 w than we used to. So after that evaluation process uh, has happened, um, the incubator PMC will vote on accepting the project uh, as a top level project and that would then be put into a resolution to the board of the ASF and the board will either approve it or not approve it. Um, in just about 99% of cases, the board always approves it. So, so there, yeah, that's the, the little bit of a story from entering the incubator to graduating as a top level project. And, you know, basically, if you embrace the Apache way, if you follow the values of the Apache way, this will enable your open source project to flourish and grow. Um, this is what we've come up with over 25 years and we think it's a good way to make open source projects, but it doesn't mean it's the only way. There are other, other ways that work out there as well. So anyway, thank you for your time. And I'm <laughs> happy to talk to anyone uh, who, who has any questions. Oh, we have lots of questions. This is good. <coughs> thank you. Uh. Uh, can I just ask you, uh, yeah. Justin? Uh, uh, I want to uh, I want to know uh, what uh, is a good project to uh, enter uh, Apache in Cuba? Uh, do we have some uh, numbers such as folks or uh, stars? We we prefer uh, projects that already have a community around them and already have a code base. But that's about the only cr two criteria. We don't get care about the technology. We don't really care what language it's written in or anything like that. Uh, we also don't care if there's another competing project already at Apache that does uh, the same thing. Uh, your your uh, review the purpose of carefully to decide whether it is uh, deserved it, deserve it, right? Yeah, um, as long as it's got a diverse community around it um, and you know doesn't have any major licensing issues, then generally we will accept a project. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm.
Uh, hello, I have a question related mm. to the license. So once the project graduated from the incubator yep. and become a top level project, uh, and so suddenly one day the PMC decides to uh, change the license and make it become some kind of business license. Uh, is, there, is it possible for the a ASF to uh, it, get It involved? would never happen. It will never happen. It will never happen. Because, how, it's, because uh, it's an AF ASF project, yeah. the ASF, one of the requirements of being an ASF project is that you have to have the Apache license. So if, uh, I can't imagine that a project management committee would do that, a PMC, but if somehow that did happen to a project, it would be kicked out of the ASF. Cool. So it would no, no longer be an ASF project. Thank you. Hi, Justin. Thanks for your comprehensive sharing, and I learned a lot from you. I have a quick question. Uh, for the past experiences, which project took the most longer time from incubation to the uh. graduation? And uh, what kind of problems did they face? Yeah. So what kind of lessons we can learn from them? And uh, from the opposite side, which project took the shortest time? And what kind of best practice we can learn from them? Yep. Thank okay, you. that's, that's going to be a, a long answer, but I'll, I'll try and keep it short. So what makes projects last there longer is generally a lack of enthusiasm and energy. Like they start out really good, and then they don't really attract much of a committee a community and then they slow down and changes get more and more infrequent and they just sort of peter out. Like, uh, not much goes on. So, w and eventually we, we, they, we probably vote to retire them. Um, other projects that take a long time are those with uh, very complex licensing requirements or very complex code bases. Um, and the other ones that can take a long time is if the people involved didn't understand open source or didn't come from a community that had some open source in it. So if, and the ones that, that take a short amount of time, if you have a project that is already open source and understands how to develop open source software, then generally they know most of this that I've just had up on my screen. So it's, they take a lot shorter to graduate. Okay, gotcha. Thanks for your explanations. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Oh, thank you. Um, a question about the mentors. How mm -hmm. do we decide, could we decide who, who to become our mentors or how do you decide who to become the mentors to the project? Um, you can ask particular people to be your mentors, yes. Yes, and they will probably say yes, but they may be too busy and, and can't. Um, but generally what happens is that a project will find a couple of mentors that it knows uh, they will stick up their hands and say, yep, we will be the mentors. And then we'll ask on the incubator list who else would like to be a mentor and a whole lot of other people will, will, will come along. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's a good idea to choose your mentors. Have a look at what other projects they've mentored and what they've done and you know what sort of a job they do, how active they are, uh, and choose wisely. Yeah, thank you. Um, hey Justin, I would love to ask uh, whether there is a limit for mentors, like maximum or minimized numbers? Um, three to four is a good number, but we have some projects that have six or seven. I, I think that's too many, and I, I think why that is, is if you've got too many mentors, everyone thinks one of the other mentors is going to handle it. You know, <laughs> it's like the too, too many cooks in the kitchen. Yeah, <laughs> But there, there's no actual prescribed number. Okay. Three to four is good. Five is, is probably fine as well, more than that. Okay, thank Oop. you. I think we are out of time. Maybe yeah. one last yeah. question quickly. Yeah. Uh, maybe uh, this is the stupidest question. <laughs> and you know, Justin, uh, we, we met about a year ago, right? Mm -hmm. In better place, right? And uh, I, I believe at that time uh, in China, we, we do not have too many committers or PMCs. And right now, I can see there are many committers, uh, many PMCs, but for me, I still do not have the right uh, privilege to the Apache source code mm -hmm. uh, code base. So uh, I'm wondering if I still got a chance uh, for you. you, you, you I, I was involved in the Apache Open Meetings project, right? Which, which project? Uh, open Meetings. Open Meetings. Um, yeah, yeah, Max, I, I, Max I Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, um, yeah. I, I 
come speak to me afterwards. I'll, 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 okay, okay, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll have a chat. I, I think you, you shouldn't have any problem being a, a committer as long as you make you know, a, a decent Thanks. amount of contribution. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your answer. All right, thank you, everyone.